Hello, hello, Hero of Collectors here. How's it going, everybody? Hope you all are doing fantastic. I know I am because I am doing my very first wave review and ranking. Yes, today we're going to be talking about the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 wave. This wave I have finally completed, and I decided to do a new way of talking about it other than just an Instagram post. So how this is going to work, I'm going to set all the figures up, we're going to do an overview, then going down 9 to number 1, we're going to be ranking these guys and giving you, I'm going to be giving you my thoughts as to why they ended up in that ranking, pros and cons of each figure, and just whatever else I have to say. So let's get these guys set up and take a look. Here we have the full wave on the table, all nine characters, including the Deluxe group, because he does tie into the movie, so I can consider it part of the wave. So let's go and start off with our number nine, working our way to number one, number one being the best, number nine being the worst. So let's get into the ranking. Starting at the bottom here, at number nine, we have Mantis. Now, while this is a very decent figure, pinless joints, double-jointed elbows, I just don't have a lot of playability with her. She didn't come with a lot of accessories. She has a very neutral face. The hands, while well, yeah, they work with her empathic ability. It just, I don't know. I have a really hard time finding a good set of poses and pictures for her that aren't just like this one or casually standing next to somebody else. I'm very happy to have her as she completed the team and the wave, but she just... I don't know, just a little disappointing of a figure. Again, not bad, just missing something. Number eight, we have Cosmo, the space dog, Build-A-Figure. While this is an excellent Build-A-Figure, an excellent attempt at a dog for Marvel Legends, I think this just misses the mark slightly. Slightly too big, and just the face needed to be, be a bit more expressive. What dog do you know that isn't you know, panting or happy or especially in the movie, Cosmo has a lot is very expressive. She gets angry. She gets happy. You know, like we're just missing some life to the figure. Uh, I do have the dome still for her, but she doesn't really have it in the movie itself. So I decided to keep it off of her for the figure, but still great build a figure. I, I know a lot of people don't care for it since it's small. But I think it's still a lot of fun, and I'm happy to have her. It's just, it's just a little bit more expressiveness. Maybe an extra head where she was happy with her tongue out and just excited. You know, we've got the tail to make her look excited, but the face just doesn't quite hit that mark. So, again, still a great build of figure, just not quite 100% Cosmo for me. Coming in at number seven is Kraglin here. Uh, great figure, great likeness on that face right there. I really enjoy that. Uh, he comes with uh, the knife sheath there and this little Yaka arrow accessory. Kind of wish he had some interchangeable open hands, but aside from that, he's pretty great. Uh, oh, my other complaint is the kind of wobbly joints that he has. For whatever reason, these particular joints are kind of thin and wobbly. Not the best. Still a very serviceable figure, represents Kraglin very well, gives us his Ravager gear, and if you wanted to, you know, you can always swap this head out and make it a different Ravager for the collection. So it has potential. I'm definitely not a bad figure overall. It's still a lot of fun, just didn't quite make, you know, the higher on the list. At number six, just missing the top five spots, we have Adam Warlock. This figure looks fantastic. I love the colors. I love the details. It has a great likeness. You know, he's got the painted little deco on the cape, which came out surprisingly well for my copy. So, excellent figure. Just, he's missing accessories. This is all we got. We got nothing else. No effects, no, you know, relaxed hands, open hands. Uh, he has kind of a distressed look later on where his hair is kind of messy. We could have gotten that, you know, it's, he's just, he's missing more value to the figure and he's still fun. You know, I had a great time posing him around, posing him with other figures. I even added some, uh, these fire effects at one point. So it, you can make it work. It just, the figure on its own just didn't quite make the top five. Still great. I have a lot of fun with this guy. He looks great. 
just number six. And now we're in the top five, and number five itself is Drax. This guy is big, he's beefy, he looks great. My only complaint is he didn't come with an extra head. We have the Screaming Head. I think this is just a repainted Volume 1 head with better deco. We have the Screaming Head from Volume 2. They even just re-released it in a 5-pack for the Disney Store. So where was the Screaming Head for this guy? It's just, I have the Volume 2 figure, but I shouldn't have to use, to get him down to have the Screaming Head for this guy. You know, I, I now only have one Neutral and one Screaming Head for each Drax. I would have liked to have more options. Still a great figure. Love it to death. I was a lot of fun. You know, he's he's a big brute. It's fun getting him into some poses. But even like this pose, you know, he's battle ready. He's ready to go. And he just looks standard. You know, he's just he's having a casual day on the couch. But yet he's battle ready. So that's the only thing that brings this figure down. But he's still fantastic. Still love him. So he gets the number five spot. At number four, just missing the bronze medal. We have Nebula. This figure, same mold as the Mantis figure, so it's got pinless legs, pinless double-jointed elbows. She's got a brand new arm that looks really sick. The face deco looks great, although the head is slightly too big for the body in my opinion, but once you get her into a pose, it's really hard to, to notice that. But what's great is she comes with the gun in her hand, plus this gun, and this swappable heated sword accessory for her hand, for her arm hand part whatever and that just kind of makes the figure for me she is you know kind of like a perfect release you got the accessories you want she's got the hands to hold them you got to swap out one part it's it's pretty great and i would like if i had to really really nitpick and like this isn't a knock at the figure itself but like if she would have came with her flight gear that she had uh during the initial adam warlock fight that would have just sold the figure. She probably would have made the top three, maybe even two. So still an awesome figure. It's just sometimes the accessories make the figure, and this is one of those cases. Plus, she also looks really great. You know, I love that arm. I'm a sucker for metal arms, hence why I'm a big fan of Winter Soldier. So number four, Nebula. Taking home the bronze today, we have Star-Lord, the legendary Star-Lord, Peter Quill. This figure is great. I know he's a lot of reuse, but it's reuse that works, and he's got a sick uniform. The face looks great, despite some weird things going on with the beard. What is that? I don't understand. But still, from a distance, looks pretty great. Uh, now, don't call me a hypocrite, even though I am, but, you know, I've been saying accessories can make the figure, and a lot of the figures that got bumped down is because of accessories, but... This accessory was not included, but it really makes the fun factor for me work because just look at that. That is sick. That is as close as we will get to the comic. What is it? The 2005 look, the Annihilation era look for Star-Lord. And that is how he's going to be displayed on my shelf. That is I love this so Yes, he didn't come with the helmet. Yes, you have to have another figure to get it. But I also can still display the other figure while having this accessory. So that's what got him to number three. This looks amazing. He posed really well. I like the guns. It, it This is Star-Lord for me. So very happy to have him looking like this. So that is why he got bronze. Taking on the silver at number two is Groot. Man, this guy is big. He's beefy. He works so well. He's got painted details. He's got bark all over him. He's got these wings. Look at these wings. This is sick as hell. And he comes with a baby rocket. Who wouldn't love a baby rocket? So, yeah. And Oh, he also has... Uh, interchangeable fisted hands. This guy is just the whole package for Groot. I can't say enough good things about him. If I were to be nitpicky, my only complaint is the head. The head is just, I, it's missing just a little bit of something. But otherwise, I can forgive it because this figure is awesome on its own. Look at how well he looks. Just getting him into like a basic pose 
like this. Look, he's just showing off. He's just, bam, check out my wings. Bam, bam. So now who makes the number one? If you've been keeping track, you'll know that it is the feisty little guy, Rocket Raccoon. Now, you're going to notice something a little weird off about this guy. Um, <laughs> this is actually the head he came with. So, again, don't call me a hypocrite, even though I am, but I swapped his head for a Volume 2 Rocket Raccoon head, which I already had in the collection. So, it just, it looks so much better. Like, I think the the brown on the... Dang it. It looks so much better. Like, the brown matches the colors. He doesn't have the super buggy eyes like this one does. It just works so much better for him. And I love that it still fits on the ball peg, and it just works. You know, he came with this really sick gun, and I have some other guns that I can equip to him as well. So I, I can't say enough good things about him. His articulation is great as well. I mean, he's got he's got ankle pivot, for God's sakes. Look at this little guy. He's... He's smaller than the Yoda back there. You can see I'm pointing at. And he's got better articulation. So this guy, fantastic despite me having to swap the head. Even if I didn't swap the head, I think it still would have made the top three. It's it's such a fantastic little figure. So he is my number one. And you know what? He's a rocket, so let's blast off. Alrighty, that was my ranking and review. Did you enjoy it? Do you like my picks? What were your picks? Leave them all down in the comments below. Make sure you go like the video. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you're following my Instagram. Do all those things. And I will talk to you all in another video, another post, another time.